Introduce I'm, yourself. I'm Who are Tom, you? I'm Tom already. I'm Thomas Milo. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm a linguist and typographer uh, <coughs> who has been working on in, in pioneering uh, computer typography since the 1980s. I'm a Turkish uh, designer, uh, typographer and uh, type designer uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, particularly interested in Ottoman metal type face production and history and I'm also a full-time professor at Saban University. We shouted about with Western uh, uh, cliches and how condescending they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, we didn't mention anything about the relation with religion. We only showed there are, there are degrees of use of, of the same script, cursive, uh, calligraphic and mechanical. And uh, we did not, never mentioned, uh, well, we mentioned calligraphy, of course, where the easiest way to find calligraphy is in religious documents. Uh, but you also find calligraphy in, in totally uh, mundane documents. We have a, a fantastic cover page of a satirical magazine that says a, a kind of a service message that we, we appear every week in beautiful On calligraphy. Thursdays, yeah. On Thursdays, every yeah. week. But it's a perfect yeah. calligraphy, could have been taken from a Quran, but it has no Nothing to divine do message. Absolutely. But that's why actually I did mention something. I learned the, the, the script and that really made me uh, uh, fully get connected with the, with, with the city of Istanbul. Because if, you, if, you, if you've been there, if you go there, you will see loads of Ottoman fountains and, and they're, they're beautiful pieces of uh, architecture and they have uh, uh, inscriptions where most people and almost all brainwashed Turks think that uh, they are probably quotations from prayers or prayers, Quran but Quran quotations. They're pretty much talking how the glorious that particular saw Sultan was because all those fountains were uh, constructed. For, for, for sultans, so they just talk, in, in particular one they talk about beautiful eyes uh, that Sadrazam had, Sürmeli Ali, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Ali, he, his eyes were like, you know, eye, laner, la, eyelashes. Eyel eyelashes, but you know, uh, eyeliner, eyeliner. Mm -hmm. as if he had an eyeliner mm -hmm. kind of prettiness, as, you know, these things happen, yeah. Well, I want to. I, I want to. I want to quickly say something, and then you you nail down. I disagree. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I fundamentally disagree with this. I have a, because of the, the 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 word that you used, complex script is to begin with. Where are you looking from that that comes across to you complex? What is complex? Perhaps I would suggest to rephrase that as uh, less linear instead of complex, mm. because it's a more objective, you know, mm. cast. Because it's a more objective, you know, point of view. It was actually clearly visualized in some of our slides, <coughs> where we had slanted images, uh, which were not contrasted with the European take on it. That everybody, everything was distorted and put in a baseline. Um, and by the way, uh, uh, one of the scripts that we used, that we showed in passing, uh, the so-called Nastalik script, there is a recent announcement uh, for the Unicode conference that this is the most complex script in the history of mankind. Now this. In reality, we also made a computer model of the same script. We needed only 300 glyphs. We can make millions of compositions out of that. And <coughs> we come to the conclusion that it is not complex at all. It's optimized. That <coughs> in the Islamic script edition, towards, uh, moving towards typography, you have two different things. You have, they have internal optimization. The script is gradually, as the need to produce increases, they change so, uh, the shapes in a way that you can write faster. That became the Rokka script. Then there is a Western concept of complexity. Now, what do you do with complexity? Simplify it. So first, the Europeans have no idea what they're looking at, and then they simplify it in their way. And that is, that's why all of a sudden this ignites uh, the, the reaction that you got. The, uh, to call other cultures complex is as condescending as it can get, including to call the scripts complex. Of course, these scripts are not complex for the people who use them, because otherwise they would discard them and take a simple <laughs> script. Yeah. It's the same as religion. I mean, you have the, the, the true religions, and all other religions are not true, of course, from the perspective who has the true religion. Yeah. And the other ones have the wrong religion, but that keeps rotating around. So there are no complex scripts. There are only scripts. I... I... Uh, <clears throat> 
I have been utilizing uh, the Decotype uh, ACE Advanced Composition Engine that Thomas Milo and his team worked uh, with experience for over 30 years. And I've been utilizing that since the past year, designing books, uh, multi-script books, Arabic and English books. And <clears throat> what I would like to see in 10 years is to the proliferation of that uh, uh, that advanced system being so mundane that you see it even on a, on a, on a, on a toilet sign with, with very particular way of uh, creating, an, uh, an, uh, creating a platform where people can you know, cast how they feel about that writing system or that Arabic style or that Arabic word in, in a way that people never dreamt about. Now, people usually think that we, we, we both are totally conservatives that wants to preserve the particular Arabic style and we we're, we're, we close our minds for, for new development. It's not like that. Actually, it's the other way around. We, this is just a pure introduction of what can be done. That's exactly what I would like to see. You know, in 10 years, the proliferation of uh, the, the Decotype ACE system uh, being uh, utilized in even public, public spaces, public places everywhere. Can I add something to that? It's, we, uh, <coughs> uh, okay, we made that system and it was made from the perspective of, from the same kind of <coughs> perspective that was mentioned before. <coughs> if you work with all these languages, you want to have the tools to deal with them in a mature way. And uh, <coughs> as uh, computer typography democratized <coughs> in the 1980s, <coughs> all of a sudden you got the tools that were reserved for the, for the government, for international business machines, and huge corporations that you could not contact even. And you got, all of a sudden, you, you got these things in your own hands. And that's why we started pioneering first solutions for Arabic, but we ended up with a technology today that is uh, agnostic. It can handle any script. Uh, just imagine if you can handle Arabic on a co with a technology that was developed for Latin, then uh, if you develop a technology for Arabic that has such a big, well, such a different uh, a technical requirement that once you have it accomplished you end up with a technology that can handle our, uh, Latin also much better and there are people who are uh, already looking forward to see our technology being used for that sort of thing another answer is completely different that uh, when I saw the uh, Korean talk <coughs> I all of a sudden remembered where I come from because I come from linguistics and as I, as I uh, commented I find all these writing systems incredibly clumsy incredibly stupid. So if, if we have a good understanding of how speech works, uh, it's not too difficult to develop um, um, metaphors for each speech movement and compose the actual graphs from signals that are directly related to the reality of speech. That would... St if, so if with all this drive of sim to simplify and to universalize writing systems, there's only one way to do it. Because the only thing we have in common is not the languages or the cultures, but our physical constraints in con producing sound. So the articulatory system should be reduced to a set of symbols from where you, in Lego block style, as the Koreans showed, compose for each language the right system, the right uh, graphical solution. That was that would be my my answer to how do you simplify script. Whereas on the other hand, the reality of script is totally different. And again, uh, we, we, we did something similar. We broke down a, a so-called complex script like Arabic to a very small set of primitives and a, small, a relatively small set of rules from where we generate all these endlessly complex things totally on the fly and also with, uh, with correct results for words that, ne that we have never seen before. And in our talk, uh, actually, to me, this was a recuperation of what we have been doing over the last 30 years. Looking and looking again at endless piles of traditional existing manuscripts and trying to get out of that, glean out of that, the common element and how you could reduce that to a simple algorithm. I came very close to it. I would just talk about script. And uh, <laughs> how would you again, say? that's that, again, that's 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 a really strange point of view to say non-Latin. It's like a, as if you know everything, you know, but Latin, because 
often is everything kind of a, if you if you reconstruct that word you you, you go to the same kind of <coughs> mindset of the, the the complex and the elegant and the Arabic letters Arabic script is just so beautiful no it's not who, who told you that it's beautiful no there are horrendous and atrocious Arabic script as well but somehow it rigorously conforms to a very particular it's like my handwriting my grocery you know yeah you should see my handwriting when I'm going to the grocery so it's it's atrocious but everybody can read it because I follow the the the, the convention of of, of how an A and an M is supposed to kind of look like, you know, my M is never going to be like a reversed E or something because it has a stroke and then my M will go that, but it will be just ugly, you know, but it will, you know, still stick to that. But I didn't, I didn't actually answer your question very well, but it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's that mindset. Well, you know? you're trying to say that non-Latin is, is a simply a survivor of, of a totally colonial mindset. Exactly. Which, which was also like non-linear. The Arabic is slanted and it, it has these interlocking effects, which is not Latin. And it's not linear. So uh, uh, there is, some, again, something condescending about it. And uh, uh, having had six years of Latin, I can also add that Latin is a, a very clumsy writing system for the actual language of Latin. Because Latin has short and long vowels, and you know, there are only six vowels in Latin, strict, uh, strictly speaking. So you had to memorize for each word where the, vowel, where the stress is, because the script couldn't express it. Sometimes the stress is on the first position and the third position from the end if all the vowels are short. But sometimes you can have, in the, with the same visual image, you could have a short vowel, a long vowel, on the second position from the end. In other words, the, the, the Latin, Latin language didn't cover the, the script. Uh, the language, the Latin script doesn't cover the language correctly because the, it doesn't cover the vowels. And it has too many letters for the sound K. I think there, 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 there you have the K, you have the C, and then uh, the C, of course, later develops into two pronunciations, depending on what vowel follows. Um, but um, in, generally, in general, you could say Latin is an alien script that landed in an area, Latium, where it was adapted as the script by people who didn't really know how to handle it. And then because they built a huge empire, they spread it everywhere, not because of its functionality, but because of the religion of Christendom that was spread with it. Mm. And, and, and uh, so basically, uh, there is nothing in inherently good or pragmatic about the Latin script. It was incredibly clumsily adapted by the English. You know, the English are a kind of um, uh, uh, coastal Germans who, uh, who uh, landed in the islands, the British Isles, and uh, started to mispronounce every single word that had a G in it. So that, they, although they kept writing it, so words like, like night, are of course exactly they should be what what you what you write is nicht and uh, plow is plug I mean all these words actually when they landed in England they had these pronunciations and but by, by allowing this to happen the English alphabet is the most ridiculous uh, produces the most ridiculous spelling system yeah. in the in the history of mankind and then t talking ag again take, taking the camera back and looking uh, talking about non Latin becomes a kind of uh, hilarious. <laughs> I have, I'm so sorry, by the way, I mean, we didn't mean to, I want to add something. This, this conference is, it's a brilliant conference and it's specifically, you know, it looks into uh, non-Latin uh, typefaces. But the thing is, I, again, um, I don't think Latin should be dismissed as well. Because when you dismiss Latin, suddenly you put that in a position, you, 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 you put that in a position that, that cannot you know, be here or something. Yeah. Although I know the intention is actually to focus on, you know, and to give a bit more credit on all the other writing systems so that, you know, it can flourish and everything. But I don't think, I, I, I don't think it should be dismissed. I think it should be all together because at the end of the day, they're all scripts. That's it. A multi-script conference that, you know, particularly, you know, <coughs> gives an opportunity <coughs> to have various scripts uh, be represented and uh, talked and, you know, multi-script. But, but scripts are usually <coughs> not, uh, not associated <coughs> with languages, but with, uh, with, with, with cultures and in particularly with religion. religions. Yeah. And for instance, the spread of Latin is simply associated with the spread of Christianity. And in its wake, uh, the spread of the imperial uh, influence they had everywhere. 
<coughs> the spread of Arabic script is actually, uh, I, I, I call it, in, in, when I really think about it, I call it Muslim script. Because not all Arabs use it. The Arabs who were not Muslim but Jew wrote Arabic with Hebrew script. And the Arabs who were Christian didn't write Arabic with, uh, with these letters, but they wrote them with Syriac letters or with Greek letters. <laughs> I mean, these things happened. And the Turks, Understand. the Turks who were not Arabs, yeah, yeah. wrote their, their Turkish language with Arabic letters because as they were Muslims. Unless they were Armenians, then they wrote it with Armenian letters. Or if uh, the ones that who accepted Buddhism and went uh, down from Central Asia uh, to the south, when they uh, migrated to the south, the Turks. They, the Turks, we're talking about Turkish people, they, they used uh, Sanskrit. They changed scripts as they changed religion. Religion, yeah. It's it, you cannot uh, separate religion from scripts. And 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 in uh, today in a secular context, uh, you still end up with a with a very heavy legacy of religion, and uh, you call that unculture. I mean, I'm a, a, a cultural Christian, whether I want it or not. But anyway, so uh, multilingual typography, for instance, is a non-starter because it's not about the languages. It's it's multicultural typography. Hmm. No, in order to avoid the term uh, multi-religious typography, because that would, of course... So you end up, from this kind of logic, multicultural yeah, typography. Multi or multi-script uh, uh, type, uh, uh, typography conference. Uh, I mean, it becomes a bit <coughs> long, but, you know... Multicultural still, typography, and, and, yeah. and non-Latin, I think, is the, is the worst thing to yeah. do. It's like saying, it's like the word atheist in religious discussions. Yeah. It means you don't believe in God, and the next thing is they say, okay, your religion is not believing in God, which is like, I don't collect stamps, so your hobby is not collecting stamps. <laughs> and then, you know, this, yeah. this kind of thing doesn't work. So, multicultural typography. It's, yeah, the, the, the whole dis, the dismissing Latin, you know, the, and, and also putting that up front on, on the conference, like non-Latin, is very bizarre to me, because like, because at the end of the day, that's a script as well, you know, just... Yeah, so it's not that, and so what is it? <laughs>